Hi friends, in this video, let us discuss estimation of wind energy at a site. Let us see how to estimate the wind energy at a particular site. In, let us see the main points of it. Yeah, estimation of wind energy, the main points are power in wind. First, we need to identify, we need to calculate power in wind at a particular location or at a particular site. And then we need to see the presentation of wind data. How the how we need to present the wind data? Okay, that will be explained and discussed in this video. And at the end, wind data statistics. So one in statistical things, one formula is derived, and that was used for our wind energy statistics. So let us see all these things. First, power in wind. The speed of free wind in unperturbed state is taken as u naught. This is taken as the speed of the free wind in unperturbed state. That means if there is no perturbations or the there is a continuous and there is a free wind is coming and the speed is constant. So that's why this is called unperturbed state. That means there is no perturbations, there is no disturbance at all. In that case, the wind speed is the constant, so that constant value is taken as u naught. And the volume of the volume of air column passing through an area A per unit time is given by like this. Yeah, this is capital A u naught. As the speed is speed of free wind is u naught. And the area of air air column passing through passing, I mean, so we are calculating. We have already decided the area of air column that is capital A, and now we need to calculate the volume of it. For that one, we need to multiply the area with the speed of the wind in unperturbed state. So that's why the volume will become capital A u naught, and the next. If suppose the rho is the density of air, the air mass flow rate through area capital A is given by rho capital A u naught. This has been derived in the previous lectures. If rho is the density of area, I mean density of air, the air mass flow rate through the area capital A is given by rho capital A u naught. That means we are making our area of the tube, cross-sectional area of the tube is capital A and if rho is the density of the air, the air mass flow rate through that area is given by rho capital A u naught. Next, if P naught is the available power is, and that power is equal to the kinetic energy associated with the mass of moving air is P naught is equal to half rho capital A U naught into U naught square or uh, P naught equal to half rho capital A U naught M cube. This is very simple as this is just like kinetic energy, the power P naught equal to half M B square where M is the mass that means air mass in this case. So in third point the air mass is this air mass and here the mass is same. So this part has been brought here. So that is rho capital A u naught, and that has been brought here. That's all. Of m u v square. So this is the mass, air mass, and this is the speed. So rho a u naught u naught square. So, so finally this will be p naught is equal to of rho a u naught cube. So this is the simple power in the wind. So the power available in the wind per unit area, what will it be? P naught by A and that is equal to half rho U naught cube. So obviously we can conclude one thing, the power per unit area is directly proportional to U naught cube. Okay, that's very important relation and we will discuss that relation in the later due course.
and this what what does it mean that means this indicates that the power available in the wind is proportional to the cube of the wind speed okay this is very important relation that we need to remember so next the air density rho varies in direct direct proportional with air with air pressure and inversely proportional to temperature as rho is equal to capital p by rt so what is meant by capital p here he, he like to describe regarding air density rho so the formula for rho is capital p by rt where p is the air pressure in pascal and t is the temperature in kelvin and r is the gas constant the value is 287 joule per kg kelvin so this is the description of air density now he want to give a problem here at standard value of air pressure sorry this spelling there is a spelling mistake that's v a l u e the standard value of air pressure is one atmosphere that means pressure p equal to 1.0132 into 10 to the power of 5 pascal If, for example if we are calculating at a temperature of 15 degree centigrade then what is the value of air density hence the air that is our problem so first we need to convert the temperature in kelvin into tem sorry temperature in centigrade into temperature in kelvin by adding 273 that is the standard formula so once we have added 273 we will get 288 degree kelvin and that will be useful and the value of air density is rho equal to capital p by rt where p is 1 1 atmosphere that is 1.0132 into 10 to the power of 5 pascal divided by 287 is the value of capital r and value of capital t is 288 and finally the value is 1.226 joule per kg kelvin meter cube so this is the one of the examples he has given and assuming the above data at wind speed of 10 meter per second now he has given the wind speed also so that the power available is 613 watt per meter square by using the same formula p not is equal to of rho a u not cube and by using the same formula he has uh, identified that the value is 613 watt per meter square next now let us see the second part up to now we have discussed the power in wind and we have cal already calculated one problem now let us see what is presentation of wind data how the wind data will be presented and uh, all these details we will discuss wind data available at a site is presented on annual basis yes this will be presented on annual basis and we will take the data hourly that means we need to consider data for each hour up to one year and one method of wind speed data is to produce a histogram of the number of hours each year that the wind speed is within certain band that means we need to calculate the number of hours per each year so we need to draw the histogram per year where number of hours has to be considered next sometimes the data is normalized by dividing the total number of hours in a year okay that we 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 need to do And the result is the probability versus wind speed histogram as it is so here he like to show the actually the data can be the data available at a site is presented on an annual basis that means for each and every hour we need to collect the data and on per year they they have to see the histogram and such that how the wind is moving and how the wind has been changed with the, with when compared to previous data similarly for this actually one method is 
taking wind on his storeground okay number of hours has to be taken for each year and the second method is it's normalized thing by dividing the total number of hours and these two things has been clearly mentioned clearly shown in a diagram and let us discuss over there yeah this is the first figure wind speed frequency distribution so let us see wind speed is on x axis and annual hours on y axis that means what does it mean means for example if i want to take 5 meter per second speed so the wind speed is 5 meter per second and that was identified in more than 1000 hours in a year more than 1000 hours in a year that means more than 1000 hours out of 8760 hours so in a year 8060 hours are there so out of 8760 hours more than 1000 hours the wind has been blown with a speed of 5 meter per second that's what the meaning of the whole data in everywhere for example uh, for 11 the wind has been blown with 11 meter per second for 400 hours out of 8760 hours in a year like this you can see here this part this part okay and this is 400 similarly wind has been blown with 13 meter per second speed of 200 hours per 8760 hours in a year okay, this this is what the exact thing of wind speed frequency distribution so by using this we can calculate we i mean we can identify the wind per a year and similarly so in the second one is the normalized thing that means the whole thing the annual hours has been divided by total number of hours in a year okay we can see that also this is called normalized speed frequency diagram yeah here we can see the same thing 0 2 4 6 8 10 12 and 14 has been given instead of 200 400 like that that means the this is this we can identify as probability versus wind speed okay this they they have calculated i mean they have nomenclated like that probability versus wind speed probability means same thing whatever how many hours the wind has been blown that should be divided by the total number of hours in a year so this is the normalized data when with respect to total number of hours in a year next one more thing is there that is called wind speed duration curve and to assess the energy generation potential so how much potential energy has i mean how much uh, important energy has been generated the hourly mean wind speed data of figure 1 okay what we have seen in figure 1 are recast into number of hours in a year for which the speed equals or exceeds the specified value as shown in figure 3 that means with the specified value the speed has been shown so for example if they have marked one speed as the specified value and after that speed they have given the rating so same thing has been done and that will be shown in figure so let us see that figure and let us discuss over there and the next one is naturally the largest coordinate on y axis is the number of hours in a year when the wind speed is exceeds sorry wind speed exceeds or equals to zero so obviously largest coordination coordinate means when it occurs it definitely occurs if the wind speed is zero if the wind speed is zero so every time the wind speed will be obviously sometime definitely zero so that is the largest coordinate so if this has been shown in a diagram and that is a wind speed duration curve to see yeah this is the diagram at wind speed zero it has 8760 hours similarly at wind speed of 4 meter per second it has been reduced similarly 
for 8 meter per second it is further reduced 12 meter per second again reduced as the speed increases the number of hours the wind has been blown also it is decreases as the speed increases number of hours decreases so this is called wind speed duration curve next power duration characteristics so as for the formula okay the power contained obviously we have discussed this one in wind is proportional to the cube of the wind speed so based on that according to the speed according to the speed accordingly the speed may be replaced by power and definitely speed can be replaced by power on x axis to obtain power duration curve okay and definitely power duration curve can be shown as shown figure 5 okay let's directly go to that figure 5 and let's explain over there and let's come back to the points again yeah this is one of the curves this is called power versus wind curve actually for every wind turbine i mean for a turbine if the wind is very less it, we cannot generate any power similarly if the wind is too high we cannot generate any power so in between these two only we can generate the power so those points are shown in wind speed on x axis so those points are cut in speed that means this point cut in speed maybe it, it has been shown at 5 meter per second here similarly cut out speed it has been shown at 25 meter per second here so from cut in speed to cut out speed i can operate my wind generator to generate the electrical energy so obviously from cut in speed it has to follow the power line approximately the power line and the power line is shown here that is p out is directly proportional to speed q okay this has been discussed okay when uh, in this lecture at the at starting of this lecture p out is directly proportional to vq so based on that the dotted line has come and from cutting speed the darken line comes and it has to follow that line after that it has to be this power has to be created power and it is constant like this it is constant like this and at cut out it has to come like this so we can say that for power generation the wind turbine has to operate from cut in speed to cut out speed and that will be shown like this in this area it will be operated and those areas has been shown here so the area up to cut in speed the area is called low speed region from cut in speed to maybe up to this point maybe up to um, rated power the speed is called maximum power point region so after getting rated power and after getting constant power I mean the rated power is constant that is called constant power region and once it has been crossed the cutout region cutout speed that is called furling furling speed region so these are the four regions a wind generator has been divided and based on the wind speed and the power okay so now this is very important diagram power duration characteristics yes this is the power duration characteristics as it has been discussed in figure 4 okay, figure 3 the figure before this and before that okay it has been it has come like this so this is the figure in this figure let us uh, let me identify some points here this is a and this is b this is c similarly this is a dash b dash c dash and this is d this is b double dash this is capital e this is o next f this is f g h b so all these are the points so let me identify all these points one by one here this is hours per annum so this is cutting point and this is furling point so from cutting point to furling point my area has to be there so let me say one thing there is a there is an area called a g 
f this area is untapped area as yes, the speed is less than the cutting point cutting point i mean less than the cutting speed so this area is untapped area so we can't generate power in this area similarly from o o c dash c e o this area is also an untapped area because this is more than furling point so we can't generate power in this area also and one more thing is from b c b dash this is wind power duration curve so this cross the rated power so the rated power is g b dash so this graph that means b c area cross the rated power so we can't generate power in this area also so this area has been untapped and o e c c dash o this area is untapped and a g f is also untapped and untapping these areas the remaining area can be tapped that means the, we can collect the data from cutting point to furling point in that area only and that area is clearly mentioned as e b dash b a f again e okay, this part the, the dark i mean the cross line part is the area where we can collect the data so that is the explanation so let us see, see the points one by one yeah according accordingly the speed may be replaced by power okay that will be correct and obtain power duration curve g a b c d as shown in figure 5 so this is the power duration curve just observe here g a b c d okay this is the curve actually so this is the curve what he has mentioned and that is the correct point and every wind turbine generator has a specific cutting speed where it starts generating power a rated speed and furling speed where it stops generation so that was already explained in figure 4 yeah this was explained already in coming to this diagram we will see some other points of this a dash b dash and c dash are power outputs corresponding to cutting speed rated speed and cutout speeds respectively okay let us identify these things this is a dash and a dash is corresponding to cutting speed and b dash is corresponding to rated speed as it is at rated power and c dash is corresponding to furling speed okay see this one this point he, he has mentioned this point c dash on x axis and that has come from c and then e that means because of e there is a point c on the curve and that curve has been reflect that point has been reflected on x axis and that is c dash so c dash is the furling speed okay Hmm. Cutout speed or the furling speed. So the area between G A F, so the top area, couldn't be tapped as the wind speed therein is less than the cutting speed that has been discussed. And coming to the next area, C D O E, that means bottom most area, and which the area which, which is just above the x-axis remain untapped as the wind speed is greater than furling speed okay this one also explain next bc bc is the portion where the wind speed is greater than the rated speed that cannot be possible so accordingly the power generation is kept constant as power as rated capacity and therefore the energy represented by bc b dash also couldn't be harnessed okay that's why we haven't taken all those areas and finally, the hatched area under the output power duration curve A, B, A, B, B dash, E, F measures the actual annual energy output of the particular wind machine at a given site. In this way, we need to, we can calculate the, we can estimate the wind energy. So, the area under G, H, B dash, O represents the energy that would be 
generated if the wind generator ran at full capacity and generated rated power all through the year this is very important point let us see this point also in this diagram so this is g h b dash o that means it has completely covered this rectangle portion so there is no deviation and everything has been covered so that will be done if the wind energy is constant throughout the year and for the throughout the power has been constant see let us see what are the, those points the wind generator ran at full capacity and generated rated power at all through the year in those cases only it, the graph has been like that g h v dash o a rectangular one and finally we need to discuss wind data statistics as we have these are the main headings so here main headings have been shown in red color and subheadings have been shown in green color so this is wind data statistics so how this can be shown by using by using statistics so it is very convenient to work with an equation rather than a discrete data obviously the data is a discrete one because we have taken the data for each and every year in an entire year in sorry for each and every hour in an entire year so obviously we will get the discrete data so b so we need to here he, it's very convenient to work with an equation that means we want to show the same discrete data with a continuous one so most of the wind data is modeled analytically by assuming that it follows a weighable probability distribution function as shown in figure 6 actually there is a probability distribution function which is very much uh, approximately equal to our data so that is shown like this f of v equal to k by c into v by c whole power k by k minus 1 exponential of minus of v by c whole power k so this is the equation where k and c are scale and shape parameters respectively and are chosen to fit the data okay according to data they have been chosen okay this is basically with uh, statistics so this is what we can uh, get the information from statistics according to our requirement this is more approximately suitable for our requirement let us see we will probability also so this is uh, figure is just like same as the previous one but here you need to draw a line by touching the tips of each and every bar that means based on those tips only we have make a function like that and that function is f of v so this is very simple thing okay in this way we can estimate the wind energy first we have calculated the power in the wind and next we have presenting the data wind data in which way we need to present wind data in per each and each hour we need to take and we need to consolidate it for for a year and that will be compared with the previous data and all these things and finally how we can get the data in a functional form by using the statistics so this is the explanation for the complete estimation of wind energy so thank you so much for listening patiently till now and if you like this video please like it if you want to share this video please share with your friends and family and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel kindly do subscribe and please press the bell button so that you will get the notifications whenever i upload any video thank you thank you very much